everyone, it's Savannah from China Missions here with the September edition of the Chinese Border Update for international students of Chinese universities. Obviously, a lot has changed in the past few months compared to what we've experienced in the previous years. So I'll go through some of the latest updates and also help answer some frequently asked questions about the Chinese border. Let's get into it. The first question is a rumor that we would like to address. Many students think that the Chinese border is 100% open as it was before the COVID-19 pandemic. That is not true. The Chinese border is not open to pre-pandemic levels. So we at China Admissions are categorizing the Chinese border as only partially open to international students. There is a few reasons why we believe this is the case. For one, only students holding X1 student visas are able to enter China to study. X1 student visas are for long-term programs over 180 days. If you are on a short-term program, most likely a Chinese language program that is only a few weeks or a semester long, that would be under 180 days on an X2 visa. So X2 visas are currently not being granted, and if you are on a short-term program that would require an X2 visa, you are not able to enter China to study at this time. Another reason why the Chinese border is not 100% open to students yet is that universities are opening to their students at different rates, and not every student is getting permission to return and arriving at once. That would result in kind of a mass rush of tens of thousands of students entering China all in the same week or in the same month, which would really overload the the Chinese system, especially flight and quarantine procedures. So many students are frustrated that their university has let some students back but not them, or that their university hasn't opened to students from their year or their major yet. That is very normal. Some universities have decided to only bring back their senior year students. Some universities are bringing the first year students in first. The universities are in negotiations with the Chinese government side and arranging things according to the quarantine capacity in their city. So unfortunately, we have no control over the process, but if you are a long-term student of a Chinese university who needs an X1 visa, please be patient. The universities are proceeding in a gradual manner to open up bit by bit. So what we're seeing so far is usually 50 to 150 students at a time are able to travel from a certain country into China or to enter a certain university we're not seeing numbers of more than like 200 students at a time being able to enter. So just think of the border opening as occurring in batches. China has been closed to students for a long time and now they are opening bit by bit. The door is opening wider to accept more and more students. And you do need the university's permission to return to China. You cannot get a Chinese X1 visa without documents from your university. So if you have not received those documents from your university yet, or your university has told you that you're not eligible to return at this time, please just maintain patience. There's not much more detail I can say. Border opening is in the hands of the Chinese government and they've decided to open in a slow and gradual manner to students. Now, a little word on quarantine times. Every student going into China will be required to quarantine, monitor their health, and closely follow the Chinese anti-epidemic procedures. The general quarantine time for the Chinese mainland is 7 plus 3. So that is 7 days in a centralized quarantine hotel and then three days of home health observation, which may take place in another hotel or in a dormitory that your university will arrange for you. Hong Kong just recently changed their quarantine rules to zero plus three. So if you're flying into Hong Kong, there are now zero days of centralized hotel quarantine and three days of home health monitoring. Now, there are a few situations in which you may need to quarantine for longer than the baseline time that we are given. The three situations are, you are flying out of a city or a country that has experienced a COVID outbreak. Second one, you are flying into a Chinese city or province that is experiencing a severe COVID outbreak. And the third is you test positive for COVID yourself while you are in quarantine which will add some extra days onto your quarantine time. Who will pay for quarantine? As of this time, students are bearing the cost of flights and quarantine themselves. We know that the costs are very expensive. If you want more information on how to estimate the costs, 
you can add the cost of flights into China from your city and the cost of seven days stay in a hotel in the city that you're flying into in China. This will give you an approximate estimation of the costs, but of course the final costs, we can't predict them with 100% accuracy due to the COVID situation. The cost of flights and the cost of quarantine and even the time of quarantine may fluctuate. So you can estimate, but you cannot get a 100% budget beforehand. Welcome to the future of studying abroad. Apply to universities all around the world on just one platform with just one click, for free. Visit globaladmissions.com to book a free call with us and discover your dream study abroad program today. If you have been given permission to return to China, you've applied for your visa or you've already received your visa and are waiting to get on the plane to travel to China, congratulations, this is amazing news for international students around the world. You will have to prepare for at least a week of quarantine if you're flying into the Chinese mainland or a few days of home health stay if you're flying into Hong Kong. And we have a sample packing list on our website of things that you might need in quarantine. Depending on how you want your conditions to be in quarantine, you may choose to bring some extra food. People who have done quarantine in China previously recommend bringing condiments like sauces, spices, salt, and sugar, bringing instant coffee or tea bags if you want another beverage. Sometimes the hotels will not give you clean sheets or clean towels, so if you know you're going to want a clean towel or to change the bed sheets during the time that you are in quarantine, it's recommended that you bring your own supplies. You should also bring other tools for accessing the internet, such as an internet stick or a VPN, because some websites are not accessible in China. It's not 100% guaranteed that your quarantine hotel will have perfect Wi-Fi. So especially if you'll be watching online lectures from in the hotel, it's a good idea to bring an internet stick or try and contact some people who have been in the quarantine hotel before, such as other students from your program, to see about how the quality is. And you can see more recommended items in the packing list on our website. The link is in the description. Lots of students are asking us about what is the best place to book flight tickets, which airlines are open to flights now, and whether you can fly into China on a direct flight or if you're allowed to transfer flights to apply into China. Unfortunately, we cannot answer those questions very well right now. China Admissions is not a flight agency and not a visa agency, and the situation is changing quite rapidly. New flights are being added, but as COVID outbreaks happen, the flights may be reduced again. So we can't give you all of the detailed live updates. If you have questions about the specific procedures on your airline going into China, you need to contact the airline itself or your Chinese university or the Chinese embassy to your home country. These are the three sources that are going to have the most updated information and the most correct information for you. For these questions, we're going to have to direct you to your university. The same goes for questions about how many COVID tests you need before you get on the plane, where you can get those COVID tests from, etc. Questions like that, we will refer you to the airline and to the university's policy. Because this situation will vary from student to student and country by country, so we can't give a general report to you here. Now, for students who are going to China for the first time, um, you need to, of course, be prepared to enter a new environment, to enter a new culture. So on our website, on our China Admissions blog, you can see different student stories of students who have been studying in China. You can see articles about student life, about books to read, apps to download, textbooks to use, and places to travel within China. So our blog is a great resource if you want to read more about China and get prepared for what you're going into. You need to make sure you have everything you need with you before you get on the plane. Of course, you can't just leave and go home and pick something up if you forgot something. So make sure you pay a lot of attention to what life will be like in China and what you need to prepare and also follow the anti-epidemic procedures in China very closely. If you don't know about China's zero COVID policy, it's a great time to read up on it. China's zero COVID policy is a flexible policy that relies on testing and quarantine to stop COVID outbreaks from happening in China. And in the past, the policy has been applied very flexibly. So some cities may have testing 
every 48 or every 72 hours in order to detect an outbreak before it becomes a serious problem. Other cities may have people go into quarantine if they test positive for COVID or if you are in close contact of a person who has tested positive for COVID. Right now, this is the active policy in China, so it's very important for you to understand it and for you to understand that even after you get to China, do your quarantine and arrive on campus, you may still experience some times where you have to stay on campus due to an outbreak in the city, or you may need to do COVID tests even after you get out of quarantine to participate in the process of stopping epidemic spread in China. We have a bit of basic information about the zero COVID policy on our website. The link is in the bio and you can check there for some basic information. And of course, it's a great idea to talk with your other classmates who are currently in China or will go to China soon to get their feedback on what to expect. Again, the zero COVID policy is flexible and it is adjusting based on city to city and province to province based on the different local situation. So we can't tell you 100% exactly what the situation you'll be facing is. The best option is to follow your university's social media and WeChat accounts and to follow social media and WeChat accounts from the city where you'll be studying. So you can get a glimpse into what life is like there, what to expect, and what you need to prepare before going in. If you have any other questions about Chinese border or what it's like to go to China, definitely check out our blog. You can leave a comment on any article and we'll answer it to the best of our ability. Thank you for watching and to the students who are going to China soon, congratulations and best of luck to you. For the students who have not yet received permission, stay patient, stay strong, your time is coming soon. All signs are in a positive direction that the border is opening further and further to include more students. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments and be sure to follow us for more updates on the Chinese border and international students.